YouTube video, though. It's the one with the doll. In the basement. You can kind of see what I'm talking about here. This one? See that doll? Yeah, the closet monster. That, like, eats people and turns them into things that they want. And that was fucked up. Alright, well, I guess we're gonna watch some videos. And such. For now. Since we're talking about it. Why not? Apparently, this is the new Jeff content of 2020. This is a channel that I've watched a lot over the years and actually kind of enjoy their content like to the point where I find it relaxing. But this is a pretty old video and uh, I've never heard this story about Bigfoot anywhere else other than in these videos. Top fives. All time favorite when talking of cryptic creatures. The large That's a volume. that's said to roam the forests in mainly North America has been a talk for over two centuries. The trouble is, there are far too many hoaxes out there, so it's hard to make any kind of conclusion. Some believe they exist and spend all of their lives believing so. So there's on one the Bigfoot place. story in this and one in particular that is insane to me. Saying the lack of evidence and amount of Bigfoots needed to keep the population going. Uh, it depends on the one thing is for sure though, the sightings and encounters with these supposed creatures are in the thousands. Yeah, this guy's got some pretty good videos. He's covered literally everything, but ones it's, find. you know, so as always, top five content. And enjoy. The Ape Canyon. Just to the, the northeast of Washington's Mount St. Helens lies Ape Canyon, home to one of the most famous Bigfoot attacks in history. Miner Fred Beck and four others had been prospecting in the Mount Volume St. Helens Volume okay for you guys? During their time there, the men had periodically stumbled across large, unexplained footprints that were at least 19 inches long and not of any known animal. Then, on a hot July month in 1924, the men were working at a gold mine in a deep canyon during the day and would return to their cabin at night to eat and sleep. I don't know, you get a bunch of dudes out week, in the woods. The men have heard strange whistling noises at night. One of them starts joking about a Bigfoot, then all of a sudden they all start seeing Bigfoot. One evening, Fred and one of the other men went to the spring to fetch water. It's a bit too quiet for you. their rifles just in case. As the pair made their way He's over, quiet. they were startled to see a seven-foot-tall hairy creature on the other side of the canyon, hiding behind a tree. Fred's friend panicked and took a shot at it, and it ran off fast, upright like a human. They watched it disappear into the woods, and the men returned to their cabin to tell the others. Around midnight that night, they all heard a tremendous thud against the side of the cabin. There they are! The twigs breaking I've heard this story before. They looked to see what was out there, and could see at least three of the upright, hairy creatures that I'm the sure two men had spotted it. earlier. The beasts then started hurling rocks at the cabin, and the men took shots. They would later describe how it seemed like the creatures were trying to push the cabin over, but when they were unsuccessful, one of them reached through a gap in the cabin and tried to grab an axe. The frenzied attack continued through the night, ending just before sunrise. The men then cautiously mm. left the cabin to head home, leaving all of their belongings behind. As oh, they yeah, left the cabin, Fred could see one of the good ones. near the edge of the canyon and shot at it three times before it fell off. If you have bed. some good ones that are safe for work, pact not to put them in the Discord and I'll check them out. In fear of being humiliated and not believed. However, one man could not keep quiet, and it soon got into the papers, prompting people from that all over like, to go hunting for this the looks like great the Harry. Grinch. The men then made a pact. Does this not look like the Grinch kind of to you? The way that the face looks? not to tell anyone about their encounter in fear of being humiliated right? and not levels. The area became known as Ape Canyon and Fred returned to the cabin with reporters. It was like the Grinch. Beasts. 
Although nothing was found apart from a few footprints, and what happened to the one Frank apparently shot is not known. I mean the Jim Carrey one. Since the incident, more and more sightings have been reported in Ape Canyon, and at one stage, a reward was offered if a Bigfoot could be caught. I've heard about this in Canada before Whatever too. They, they have like in that canyon, primeval animal and encounters Frank in the middle of like the wilderness and stating he thinks like the Northwest Territories and stuff like that. Hence why one has never been caught. <laughs> well, that fucking art is awesome. Bigfoot, Mike the supernatural Woolley. being. This encounter involves deer hunter Mike Woolley from Keecha, Louisiana, who had set out on the afternoon of December 1981. He was like coming through a portal. He parked his truck and walked to his deer. Yeah, dude. After sitting there for around 30 <laughs> minutes, he spotted a young deer running towards him. As she approached the deer stand, it was clear Amazing. that she was exhausted and had been running from something. Mike instinctively thought that it must be a male deer and prepared himself for its appearance. But as he looked around, he noticed. I've seen a few trees. things that they thought he that they it saw. Seven to eight foot tall. By the top passing them, but hairy. at first he was convinced. Looks like it was swamp a man thing. Dressed in a gorilla suit, so he started shouting at it, telling them to clear off and stop messing around. Mike lined up his rifle so he could look through the scope. That looks like the rock, and man. Was shocked by what he saw, it let out a roar, and Mike got a look at its huge human-like teeth. Mike said a just added whistle hair. could then be heard in the distance, and the creature he was looking dead in the eye whistled back. This is so Realizing this was most likely a call for its mate, he decided to run back to his truck, but the creature started chasing him. As he approached his truck, he realized he was not far enough in front smell? to be able to get into his vehicle without it catching what him, the foot? fired a warning shot. This was enough to keep the creature cooking. back long enough for him to get into the nice his truck. truck and drive away. But one last look in his rearview mirror, and he could now see two of these creatures chasing the truck two before they turned off. Two bigfoot creatures. Before this encounter, Mike had heard of Sasquatches, but never believed they were real. He is now convinced the two beasts he saw that day were in fact bigfoots. When asked why he didn't shoot it when he had the chance, he replied, "What the foot is human. stepping in?" It had human eyelashes and teeth, and a human-like face. And you smell la 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 la. So, did Mike encounter a real-life Bigfoot whilst out hunting in Louisiana in 1981? What do you think? With the, the siege of Hanobi. Okay, this is the story this next that I'm talking about. In January. I've spoken about this a few times on stream, and I can never find any like other accounts of this. This story is bizarre to me. When a family living in a rural homestead just outside of the town of Hanobi in Oklahoma made a call to the Bigfoot Field Research Organization. Claiming they were being terrorized. Oh, by no, it's a different one. No, it's not yet. Not yet. Different story. And was repeatedly trying to get into their house at all hours of the day. Coming Bigfoot up, research though. organization representatives visited the home and the family shared what they had been experiencing. Loud screams, whistling and chattering from up in the hills. And on one occasion, the creature had been shot at when it was. Oh, yeah, it did look like that down here. Ran away. They also revealed the beast was stealing meat from their freezer. That the was located in an outside shed, meat. and often found mutilated deer that had their legs violently twisted and broken, and had their internal ah, organs pulled through a hole made between their neck and ribcage. If they thought a Bigfoot was present in the woods, investigators deemed it unsafe to remain on the property and carry out research. Um, Although they had seen enough to be convinced that there was some I hate unknown the, creature uh, nearby. I hate soon got like out cattle going on mutilation the stuff and authorities got involved or anything like that. Reason, like it's just not found out the interesting to me. Deer from their porch. Steps were taken to deter the deer from being attracted to the home and bar from a few howls up in the hills. <laughs> this, is, this is a very real picture. You can tell because it's Bigfoot with nature. Posed Bigfoots have moved on. The left floor this is out. it. This is the one I was talking about. The Bigfoot War. Apparently, there was like a recorded battle between like actual troops. This next story is old, meaning that either adds to its believability or that it has been highly exaggerated over the years. I'll let you see what you think and make up your own mind. In the 1850s, Native Americans known as the Choctaw Tribe were living in Oklahoma territories, during which they reported getting nocturnal visits from what they described as giants, who started off stealing crops, but then began giants. abducting and killing the tribe's children, possibly to eat. The giants. Asked the local community for help, and former U.S. Cavalry Captain Joshua Lefleur stepped up and organized a party to track down whatever was lurking in the woods and causing this trouble. 
He rounded up 30 tribe members and seven cavalrymen, and they set off on horseback, armed with rifles, heading deep into the forest where the giants were known to live. Almost as soon as they reached the edge of the forest, the floor was littered with bones, presumably of those who had been taken from the tribe. Four hairy beasts were then spotted, and Lefleur opened fire, but one of the creatures lunged at his horse, fatally wounding it. Lefleur found himself face to face with the Bigfoot, and a <laughs> the fuck from is this rifle picture, proved insufficient at killing it. The story goes that Lefleur's head was ripped off during the fight. A the dude's head ensued, got ripped off, the guy who led the fucking lives, attack. As well as four Sasquatches. After the battle, the surviving group surveyed the area and discovered the bodies of 19 children. The men buried the children in small graves and then buried their beloved captain, honoring him with a 21-gun salute as a mark of respect. They then burned the putrid bodies of the Bigfoot and left. It's an intense story. If anyone could find to be true. any other account well, of that, I would be totally interested because I don't think I've ever heard anyone. In area at the time, an area that many say is the perfect terrain for Bigfoots to habitat. However, there are ever questions been like, about what oh, the yeah, were. Because it's possible they were grizzly that definitely bears, happens. Although it's unlikely, like I've never heard that anywhere before. That they would eat children. Another theory is the cavalrymen went in search of bandits who they got into a confrontation with, and the story was changed to Bigfoots over the years as rumors spread. Whatever the truth is, it's stories like this one that add to the growing number of believers in Bigfoot type creatures who reside deep in the forest throughout the United States. Theodore Bigfoot. Roosevelt. 26th President of the United States, yeah, Teddy saw Theodore Bigfoots. Roosevelt was handed the presidency after William McKinley was assassinated. He was an unlikely successor, but his personality and macho image proved popular with the American public, and he was voted to full office in 1904. He went on to be admired by historians and heralded as a great leader, ranking alongside Washington, Jefferson, and Lincoln. This was part due to him being quirky, adventurous, and spontaneous, and his that passion sounds for so is it possible mackerel. that his account of a Bigfoot is the most credible of all? Roosevelt told of this story in a book he wrote in 1892 called The Wilderness Hunter. Yeah, I don't know if I like Teddy or not. In the wilderness, and I do a lot of fucked up shit too, but with his own. But one story one thing in about him stands out very charismatic. Enthusiasts. It's a story he recounted about a hunter called Bowman who set off on a trapping expedition with his partner did he really believe in camp, Bigfoot? They went to explore the surroundings. I can't hate Upon him if he did. The camp had been destroyed. Their immediate thoughts were that it was a bear, although after inspecting the tracks left, they realized whatever the creature was, it had been stood on two feet, not four. That night, as they settled down to sleep, they were startled by strange noises and could see the silhouette of a large creature lurking in the bushes. Yeah, I know he's pretty the like gung ho and, guns, and the creature ran off. A knee jerker. The next morning, the men went to check their traps, and again, when they returned, their campsite had been demolished. They decided to stay one more night, and then make their way back home in the morning. During the night, the creature returned, tormenting them again like it had done the previous nights. In the morning, Bowman went off alone to collect the traps one last time, and when he returned to camp, his friend was dead. It looked as if he had been flung around the campsite by something very powerful. His neck was broken, and he had been badly bitten. Although surprisingly, his body was intact and no attempt had been made to eat him. Bauman dropped everything and fled the scene. Over the years, there has been speculation about the story there regarding is. whether or not Bauman was a real person or just fiction, as Roosevelt never talked much about it. Some have even wondered if this was in fact Roosevelt's <laughs> experience and he used the name Bauman as a disguise. Oh, although man. that is not something he ever admitted to. Why is his belt buckle a Regardless fucking of its origin, Duke Nukem Theodore's belt buckle? And the contents in which it was written makes you believe these are actual accounts of being a hunter in the wilderness. So it's definitely a credible story. And although Roosevelt never publicly admitted to believing in Bigfoot, this encounter and its inclusion in his book... It's time to shoot grits there was some and kill Bigfoot. Experience. What's your thoughts? But I'm all out of grits. So there's five supposed encounters with the infamous Bigfoot. Let me know your thoughts on the stories and uh, whether or not you believe Bigfoot exists. This guy has exist. a bunch of videos I liked or over the years. Or if you've ever had your own encounter, then... Three million subs. Um, I think like abandoned islands. Creepiest and most haunted abandoned places in the world. Hmm. Some of these are a little. I 
are definitely places we've all seen before. Hmm. Poltergeist activities caught on tape. All right. Top five. Oh yeah, the Here Slim Jim fives, Bigfoot thing. We've talked a lot about Jack experiences Winks. with poltergeists. Oh, pretty good. Spirits that like to inhabit, disrupt, move, or otherwise mess with inanimate objects. What is much more of a rarity is finding actual documented cases of regular people witnessing poltergeist activity within down, their own home or area where they live. And whilst it can be hard to distinguish the supernatural from the coincidental or false, when faced with a seemingly wow, we already saw all supernatural these. anomaly, Maybe the results won't show that one. can be absolutely terrifying. So here we look at five cases in which poltergeists are believed to have been caught on camera. Hit those lights, sit back, and enjoy. Should be a little quieter now. Mellow Bird. Mellow Bird is a YouTuber from the UK that documents his experiences with poltergeists within his own home. He's been living in a house that has been haunted continuously by poltergeist activity since at least 2004. I mean, if Mellow you've got Bird a Ouija board as your ghost channel icon, or believers in the paranormal, as he know. feels, they often try to oversensationalize his experiences. Additionally, he does not want to scare the spirits in Maybe you're kind of looking way, for it. Which he fears might happen if other, more extensive investigations take place. There are a multitude of documented cases of paranormal activity on his channel, some of which we've featured before, but today we focus like on the hat. first video that he ever posted and the one that inspired him to continue to document yeah, these like cases the, of paranormal the good activity. Shit. This video was uploaded oh, did you post on July stuff, 9th, Max? I'll check it out. 2009, and was called Real Poltergeist Caught on Video, Poltergeist Activity in My House, and has since received over 500,000 views. Take a look at this incredible footage of a supposed poltergeist laying waste to objects around his house. Do it again! <clears throat> <laughs> Did again. Hello. 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 Who's there? Hello. Who's there? Mario. Hello? Do a backflip. Hello? Hello? What do you think this was filmed on? Like a fucking razor phone? As you can see, this poltergeist seems to have extensive control over many of the objects around the home. Picture frames, bottles, and other objects fall as he moves from room to room, trying to film all the things tumbling down. What is especially scary, and what yeah. makes this clip so compelling, is that we might actually be able to hear the poltergeist speak right near the end of the video. Around 1 minute 3 <sighs> seconds, an airy, muted voice can be heard saying, Here's something. He was telling him to clean up. He have your flat. Just before Mellow Bird finally decides to leave the house, this sounds like the poltergeist is taunting him, practically laughing at the mayhem it's causing. Unfortunately, the camera is covered in the dark laundry room during this time, so he can't tell what's going on around him. But it's clear whatever happened freaked him out. And if these videos are faked, then they are pretty convincing. What do you think? Oi! Russian office poltergeist. Unlike the last video, this video has received much less attention. YouTube user DM Secret Facts uploaded the video Poltergeists in the Office in July of 2014. The channel is composed of a variety of cryptid videos throughout Russia. It appears to be a channel that re uploads DM Russian Secret Facts, yo, DM me Secret Facts. While some of these videos are obviously. It's gonna be my new Twitter account. Such as the Flying Humanoid, others are harder to dismiss Only and are convincing and creepy experiences. And this poltergeist video is one such example. 
Take a look. If it's got Russian in the title, you know it's going to be a fucking crazy trip. If you open up your YouTube Rex and there's some Russian in the YouTube description, you better be clicking on that. Come on. <gasps> Is this the Pixar opening thing? Russian Pixar? The Pixar lamp is coming to life. Now there are many things <laughs> the door is open. <laughs> and the more you analyze it, the creepier it becomes. The poltergeist seems to be very subtly messing with the objects ah. around the room. It causes a few power surges, shown in the overhead light and the desk lamp on the table. You can tell this isn't just someone flipping a light switch, as their luminosity intensifies suddenly and drastically above the capacity of the bulb itself. We also see a pen coast across the table unevenly, disrupting papers on the desk. A variety of weird shapes. Remember the lamp the room, in the Brave Little the Toaster? Falls to the table as the shape moves towards it. Do you think all the, the items in the Brave Little Toaster were like haunted by a poltergeist? Actually manifesting in the room. While many might say that such figures what? have been edited in, I'm thinking it's like you the can same see thing. when it first appears that the anomaly actually affects the light around it, casting a translucent shadow on the objects of some of the tables. So it isn't just someone standing able to in move. the room and cutting themselves in. As the second time the apparition appears, you can clearly see it's translucent. What is slightly suspicious is the convenient positioning of the camera. However, true or fake, the clip is still incredibly creepy. What's your thoughts on it? Uh, Poltergeist in daughter's room. This next clip I think is pretty that's not real. We saw this one the other day. Could be one of the most authentic and clear examples. This is a good example of why some people shouldn't have the children. Because they're just going to use them to get like views on videos. Called the dark side of humanity. Although it's likely there are other copies of this footage around. It appears to be a copy of security footage. As you can see, a cropped date in the upper left hand. It's just like he like moves papers around and the kid freaks out. Not even good. This channel only has two videos and it's not a paranormal channel. Okay, it only has two videos. That means it's legit. Squatter or Poltergeist. Now, this is a random upload on a channel called Rocky Mills and is the most recent encounter on this list. This channel only has two videos. I'm not, not just because it's a boring channel. video, I don't want to watch it. So this was just a chance encounter a man had while checking out a house he was working on. After he finds the property disheveled, he initially thinks a squatter disheveled. has moved in and searches the house, videoing on his phone, ready to confront the intruders. But as this footage shows, he gets more than he bargained for. Take a look. Take a look. Filming in vertical, yeah, he's just... Hello! It's called TikTok proofing your videos. You should film everything vertically from now on. For when a new media platform comes out. Who is it? That basement looks fucked. Just... Go down there on a good day. What is clear is that the man is not expecting any paranormal activity. However, from the moment he first goes into the basement, oh, yeah. you can tell he is freaked out and senses something other than a squatter. When the lights flicker, he's scared enough to run away, dropping that his basement phone in the process that spins around in awful. a weird way. He later like cautiously returned to get his phone. This guy was definitely spooked by something, and some say that if you slow the video down enough, 
you can see a slight shadowy figure moving about before he drops the phone. It seems that who, no. or whatever this entity was, it's clearly not happy at Do being you see disturbed. It? it would be interesting to know if the new occupants of the refurbished property have had any similar experiences. I get the feeling they probably wouldn't sleep soundly at night if they have seen this footage. Number one. Possessed rickshaw. This last clip is a bit different and happened in front of a crowd of people inside a market thought to be in Indonesia. It's been labeled Bekak Kusurapan, translated to the possessed rickshaw. The footage caused a bit of a stir when it first appeared on Instagram in May 2017. Although the incident what are we is even looking at? The resolution's so bad. Not much is known about the video, but as you're I think I'm like looking too closely at my monitor. I have to like lean back more. Take a look. What? I like this guy's going nuts. There seems to be no explanation for the driverless and motorless car. The guy's laughing. So throughout the market. All right. Are you ready for crazy taxi? Back and forth within the Choose area. your driver. The violent display is witnessed by the gathered crowd. But despite this, we can find very little information about the event. If it is a poltergeist, it is extremely rare footage. And if any of you have any further information on the I, I somehow think that that's not a ghost just because of the reaction. So that's five terrifying pieces of footage that could possibly show poltergeist activity. Thanks for watching. But that's and so that's funny. Yeah, it could have it could have had an engine or whatever. Could have. I see your messages, Max. I'm going to mark these down for next time. Just because I have a few other weird ones I'm going to look at for now. But any other suggestions, I do appreciate. We'll take a look at them all. Um, there's like a weird one about an island. This is it. There are an unknown number of places in this world that once seen thousands, if not millions of people, that are now completely deserted and dead. Castles, houses, islands, even entire cities that have been totally left to the elements. Now, some of these places have been abandoned on good terms, but for some, like the last one in this video, there is a dark history behind why the people have left and will never return. Here are five of the eeriest abandoned places in the world that are also believed by many to be haunted. There's like a mining camp? Bodhi. This next place the is Japanese not only Army supposedly used haunted, but it's also said to be plagued by a curse. Bodhi began as a small mining camp east of the Sierra Nevada mountains. It was established following the discovery of gold in 1859 by a group of prospectors led by W.S. Bodhi. A man who sat I want to go look at some ghost towns supplies and never lived to see the rise of the town that was named after him. Shortly after his death, the collapse of a mine in the area that'd be fucking a huge awesome. seam of valuable gold, followed a few years later by another huge discovery. The town grew and grew and was booming by 1878 when millions of dollars of gold bullion were being shipped out. But the growth of the town was attracting the wrong type of residents and soon Bodhi became known for its bandits. Like gold where do you have to go for that really? Just decline. like... And when a fire brought many houses to there are a lot in California. People started to leave. That's just like stuff like that. In the 1950s, the town of or Bodhi what? was practically abandoned. The shops, houses, cemetery, and restaurants were left as they were and remain that way to this day. And with this comes not only eerie feelings, but also many paranormal stories. The J.S. Kane house, or like the once desert a resident more. of a prominent businessman, is now thought to be the home of his family maid who took her life after her affair with Mr. Kane was made public. The Kane house is exactly how the family left it, and visitors there have experienced the usual paranormal feelings. Unexplained cold spots in the bedroom, intense pressure pushing down on them, doors seemingly slamming on their own, and apparently have witnessed the maid peering out of windows. One visitor who was walking through Bodhi Cemetery said his little girl was laughing and talking to an unseen person. It's believed to have been the three-year-old daughter of Albert and Fanny Myers who died at Bodhi in 1897 and the old collapsed mines are said to be guarded by the apparition of a white mule. Today, the ghost town of Bodhi is open That's to the public, cool. advertised as one of the most a ghost donkey? abandoned gold mining towns of the Old West. That's but not menacing at all. To visit, it's thought that the ghosts guard their town against theft, and anyone who dares to remove anything will be yeah, ghost donkeys here. and the dreaded curse of Bodhi until they return it.
Those who've travelled on the London Underground will have either found it a fascinating journey filled with history and tales, or an overcrowded and claustrophobic place that you can't wait to get out of. So weird seeing the those pictures like that sometimes. The overcrowdedness comes from the 3.5 million people who use the Underground every day. And the history is that since their construction in the 1800s, there have been plenty of ghost stories and sightings. Yeah, under uh, anywhere in England seems like it's pretty fucked up. For trains, a good chance there's dead bodies. Oh, dude, totally. To oh my god, he's really there. It seems like everywhere they dig in the UK, they find like a dead king or something. And is never seen leaving. Now, I will be talking about the underground as a whole in a most haunted places in Britain video, but there is one Dead station that is said to be haunted everywhere. and has been abandoned for 21 years. Aldwych Station was first opened in 1907 and was initially named Strand. It wasn't as successful as hoped and passenger numbers were pretty low. So all sorts during the of Second stuff. World War, Aldwych was closed and used as an air raid shelter and storage area for nearly six years. It reopened after Good the point. war and continued transport until the last train left the station on the evening of September the 30th, 1994. Nowadays, it's occasionally used for film sets and is sometimes open to the public. The abandoned station has retained its original that features, cool. including tiles and posters on the walls, which all add to its creepy atmosphere. Oh, that's bizarre. There is one very frequent sighting of a ghost, and that is of a lady who is apparently seen many times by line engineers, some of which refuse to go down there, walking the abandoned tracks at night. Cleaners have also witnessed the same looking female yeah, dude, any, and it's thought I don't know if anyone's ever been to Grand Central Station before, but even that is a scary place. Station. If you go underneath, to add to its eeriness, there is also I'll show a you a video after the a video after this, but like, uh, you know, the biggest train subway station in the world, probably in New York City, like <clears throat> taking the trains out, like the commuter trains, like you have to go through some really weird places in Grand Central. Abandoned train from the old Northern like you look out the window and you think you're going to see like a rat man. The pitch black station and tunnels at Aldwych make for a scary. It does remind me of that kind of. And people from all over the world add it to their ghost hunting list when visiting the city of London. But can you just imagine being lost down there alone in the middle of the night? Povelia Island. This completely abandoned island. This is the one I'm, I was Venice thinking of. And Lido in Italy, and for centuries it's been a dumping ground for murderous, diseased, and insane people. <laughs> it's in Venice. <clears throat> the island was first inhabited in 421 by men, women, and children who fled the rampage of the barbarian invaders and settled there. However, by the 14th century, the island was abandoned. In 1348, so cool. with the arrival of the bubonic plague, the Romans decided to separate the sick from the healthy, so anyone who showed the slightest sign of illness Help was shipped off to Pavelia without their will, where they lived their last torturous days of their life. So the exile. Romans just sent everyone with Once the, the black plague happened, to this place? bodies were burned on giant fires, but oftentimes even the living were Yikes. killed this way. The islands became filthy, and after the plague passed, it was deserted. Then, in 1630, when the Black Death returned, the island once again became a dumping ground for the diseased and dying. It was then abandoned again. I guess again, it's pretty smart if you think about it, though. One of the existing buildings was converted into a psychiatric hospital, where the mentally ill were kept in prison. Oh, -like conditions. good. Since mental illness That's a good was not understood recipe at all back for then, something. the patients were not there to be treated, but to be kept away from everyone else. Bond movie? I don't know. Maybe. Apparently, the asylum doctor would perform excruciating lobotomies and experiments on the patients, but he paid the price. He fell if anywhere is haunted, it's definitely this now, fucking island. Sure, if he was driven insane by spending his time on the island and was attempting suicide, or if he was pushed by an unseen force, but after surviving the fall, as witnessed by a nurse, plague he was victims, to death by a black shadow that hovered over him. Early the psychiatric was mental closed down in 1975, research. The island was again abandoned, but by this stage, while over a hundred thousand people Not had good. been burned there. And as a result, human ash makes up a large amount of the island's soil. Wow. Since its closing, the bell tower yeah, has been removed. The plague. Locals claim to hear the chime echoing from the island at night. Few people have. Yeah, I've heard about that airborne the tuberculosis islands. I played a and game those about who have that actually. Gone, have experienced things that will stay with them for the rest of their lives. Apparently, I drive by there all the time, go there going to the airport. It, but left when their daughter was violently attacked by an unseen force and needed stitches by the in her uh, White Stone Bridge. Then, when construction workers were attempting to restore the hospital building, they all stopped and left the island, but would not say why. And when a man visited to take photos, the local captain who agreed to take him there refused to leave the boat and step foot on the island. In 2014, a businessman hmm. bought a 99-year lease for 400,000 euros, and he hopes to turn it into a tourist attraction. But many believe it's only a matter of time before he realizes why this 18th year of that rose, and he hopes to not say why. And when a man visited to take photos, the local captain who agreed to take him there refused to leave the boat and step foot on the island. 
In 2014, a businessman bought 2014? I wonder what the fuck happened with that. And he hopes to turn it into a tourist attraction. I wonder, uh, believe it's only a matter of time what state it's in right now. Why this 18 acre plot of dark Seven years ago. is ranked as the most haunted island on the planet. This next one is a near abandoned town with only a handful of old time uh, locals still living. You know what it is. It's Centralia, a small Pennsylvania Centralia. town that was built in 1866 to house the workers of its booming coal mining industry. It had hotels, saloons, and smart houses, and much like Bodhi, its miners were getting rich through the area's growing industry. You can't go here then, now, though, right? in 1962, a fire from a burning landfill spilled into an unused coal mine. It then spread inside the network of anthracite-rich deposits deep underground, and the noxious fumes escaped from every orifice of the town, <laughs> seeping through the pavement and pipework, and eventually causing sinkholes in the streets. Despite promise and plans to put the fire out, no action was taken, and by the 1980s, all plans to put the fire out were abandoned, and almost everyone had no choice but to leave. Nowadays, Centralia looks like a scene from an apocalypse movie. I know, a it's a funny network of choice of words. Streets, remains of homes this is people. awesome. This is incredible looking to me. I don't know why. It's rubble, steps that lead to nowhere, and three eerie abandoned cemeteries. A few buildings still stand, as well as a few houses that are occupied by the eight or so residents who refuse to leave. The state are waiting for them to die so they can destroy their homes and declare Centralia a ghost town. With 99% of no, the I thought the government abandoned, was paying people to no leave. no surprise that it's had its fair share of paranormal stories. Many ghost centers go there in search of activity and most feel like this they've been watched or appears. A few years ago, a lady called Ruth Edison visited Centralia and swore that she and her friend saw a couple of what appeared to be miners walking out of a sinkhole before rising up and disappearing. What? Another story tells of a man who decided to visit the area when passing by with his partner. After they went into an abandoned house, they could both hear someone very clearly walking down the stairs. They assumed someone else was in there also taking a look around, as there was no <laughs> way that it was an animal or the house creaking. But when the footsteps stopped at the end of the stairs, no one was there. Random fucking ribcage. With all these haunting stories, there is no surprise that Centralia was I'm the sorry, is that just a dead person? Silent Hill, after the film screenwriter took a visit there. It's predicted that the fire will continue burning for 250 years, long after the residents are dead and gone, and visitors yeah, who are warned not to go said. there will continue to explore the area in search of the past residents who had no choice but to leave their homes, and to experience mm -hmm. what they all describe as an unexplainable feeling and atmosphere. It could have been a not real rib cage. Ashima Island. Okay, this one is crazy. Positioned nine miles from the Japanese city of Nagasaki is an abandoned island called Hashima. In the late 1880s, coal was found beneath the island, and it wasn't long before apartments, a school, a hospital, a cinema, restaurants, and a graveyard was being built for the coal mining workers and their families. This is insane. By the 1950s, it was one it's of like the most populated island? places on the planet, with 5,200 people living on the 16-acre island. But in the 1970s, the coal started to run out, and the workers were offered first-come, first-served jobs off the island. In a rush to secure the jobs and support their families, people left as fast as they could, leaving almost everything behind, and that's exactly how it stands today. But the island has a dark past that not many talk of, and it's been downplayed over the years. But it's why the Koreans have given it the name, the Island of Hal. Just before the Second World War, it's just so cool to think of how deep Koreans that goes. an unknown number of Chinese prisoners of war were forced to work in the 1,000 meter deep underground coal mine. It's insane. The workers were given little food, and torture was apparently not uncommon. Although an exact figure has never been released, it's thought that upwards of a thousand forced workers died on that island as a result that of definitely their living fucking and haunted. conditions. The island slavery carried on until the end of the Second World War, where non-forced work continued until its closure. Many of the locals do not want to go near or even talk of the place, and it's Look at that though, that looks insane. who died there. Today, most of the island is closed off to the public. That looks like uh, However, a small set from a movie. Was open for tourism in 2009 if you did ever want to visit which I've no doubt would be an incredibly eerie experience. So there's five creepy abandoned places that are also said to be haunted. If that's the same place too, that looks the same. Video, and I cannot wait for October where I'll be doing loads of these creepy videos. Yeah, man, you think that's night. bad? And with all the stuff that's not recorded too. Um, oh, I just had an idea for something else too. There was one thing I wanted to watch. No, I can't remember. What was haunted about it? They didn't actually, yeah, they didn't really say anything specifically, but I think it's just, they're like, things have happened.
in this place. Oh, damn it. There was one in specific I was talking, I was thinking of. Oh, well. Oh, oh. Um, let us I'm looking for the forest ranger story now. I think the video I'm thinking of in specific is gone now, though. Hmm. Whatever, we'll just watch another one of that guy's videos. Whatever. Okay, here's a good one. There is a question we have all asked. Are we be alone in this universe? Well, despite our ever increasing technology and knowledge, we are do not have a alone? answer to that question. Now, there are two very strong and popular signs of believed alien life, and that is the wow, wow. signal and the black knight. But I have already mentioned those in previous videos. So here The Black Knight satellite is so cool, but it's like also been disproven. Five so many times, it's like not real at all. That we humans are not alone. The link between ancient Egypt and extraterrestrials has long been discussed, and we are all familiar with the speculation about alien intervention when it comes to the Egyptian pyramids. That's how they built them. Construction. But whether you believe in that theory or not, there is one thing that people swear shows strong signs aliens did visit Earth during those times: the Egyptian hieroglyphics, which are literary characters in a symbolic alphabetic form of writing and one of the most interesting discovered hieroglyphics that many say has links with extraterrestrials is the two to three thousand year old so-called Abydos helicopter. It was found in an ancient temple that was built by Seti I and his son Ramses II in Abydos, Egypt. Now looking at it, what's the first thing you can spot? Well, there's no denying that this looks like a helicopter, this looks like some sort of boat or yacht, this looks like a ship of some sort, and that looks like what many say is a futuristic ship or glider. So this was found on a stone slab that was supporting the ceiling. It was studied and concluded that it was nothing more than an accidental illusion caused by overlapping hieroglyphics, yeah. where plaster had been set onto the stone to replace the writing underneath. Brave. And that was yeah. it. It was Fortnite. It was sort of left and not talked about again. Basically Fortnite. There are a few researchers who say there is much more to this. They concluded that if the Egyptians wanted to overlap any existing writing, they would simply replace the limestone. It's believed the hieroglyphics would have been engraved on the ground and then elevated up into position. So if a change needed to be done, researchers say they could have just replaced the block and wouldn't have to replaster it. Then there are those who do not believe it has anything to do with ancient of technology. Course. They say if there were vehicles like the ones believed to be shown, then surely there would be a lot more evidence of them and not just on one single inscription. So what do you think of these mysterious hieroglyphics? Is it proof aliens came down during the ancient Egyptian years, or is it nothing more than a coincidence? Astronauts. Proof? You it's be always the judge. fascinating when an astronaut argues the existence of aliens, because if anyone has more of a chance of seeing an extraterrestrial, it's going to be astronauts who venture into space. Now, the rumor is that if an astronaut oh, man, those a UFO or an extraterrestrial being, they cannot report this to the press. But that hasn't stopped them because over the years, many this astronauts one looks like a goblin kind of. He's got like goblin ears. In June 1965, when astronauts Ed White and James McDivitt were passing over Hawaii in a Gemini spacecraft, they say they witnessed a strange-looking metallic object with long arms sticking from it. McDivitt took pictures, I've never heard this but he before. said that it did not capture what he could see properly due long to the glare and the grubby with window. Arms? The rumor is that he also took a video, but this has never been released. McDivitt has said that some UFO promoters did exaggerate the story, but debunkers UFO. did also one JPEG. It. Another sighting by astronauts happened in December of the same year. Gemini astronauts James Lovell and Frank Borman saw an unidentified spacecraft some distance from their capsule. The Gemini Control Center told him that he was seeing the final stage of their own booster rocket, 
but Frank confirmed <laughs> that he could see the booster rocket and the unidentified object was something completely different. But what exactly it was is a mystery. NASA was like, now, no, you it's Buzz your own ship. Moon landing I see an alien. Not, they both apparently reported that aliens have a base on the moon and were told to get off and stay off. According to unconfirmed reports, both Neil and Buzz saw UFOs shortly after landing on the moon on the 21st of July, 1969. According to former NASA employee Otto Binder, unnamed radio hams with their own VHF receiving facilities that bypassed NASA's broadcasting outlets picked up the following exchanges. How thick that What was it? Is, what yeah. the hell was it? That's all I want to know. What's there? Chunky These boy. These babies are huge, sir. Enormous. Oh my God, you wouldn't believe it. I'm telling you, there are other spacecraft out there, lined up on the far side of the crater edge. They're on the moon watching us. Who said that, Neil According Armstrong? To former naval officer and Russian UFO researcher, oh, did he say among us? Neil Armstrong relayed the message to Mission Control that two large, mysterious objects were watching them after having landed. But the message was... That's what Among Us is named after. I bet you didn't know that. They named the, gum, the game after that incident. Censored and never heard by the watching public. It's true. NASA's cover-ups. The fact oh that NASA God. conceal information from the public has led many to believe that they are aware of the existence of alien life. And one of the most literally crusty of alien cover-up comes from Dr. Edgar Mitchell. He was part of the Apollo 14 space mission in 1971, and during his two lunar missions, he spent 33 hours on the moon. Dr. Mitchell said that he was aware of several UFO visits during his career, but each one had been covered up. He said that workers at the space agency oh had described God. aliens as little people who look strange to us. Dr. Mitchell stated that their technology is far more sophisticated than ours, and if they were hostile, we would be gone by now. He is also told that the believed Roswell alien crash of 1947 was real, and the reason it was covered up was because the US did not want the Soviet to know of the craft's technology, and they did not know if the apparent alien being was hostile or not. Apparently, officials from NASA have commented on Dr. Mitchell's Look at all these by saying, NASA... Looks like all these guys are just like, totally not on board with whatever this guy is saying. These are all looks of disapproval. Well, I believe that the UFO... ...does not track UFOs and is not involved in any sort of cover-up about alien <gasps> life on this planet or anywhere in the universe. Dr. Mitchell is a great American, but we do not share his opinions on this issue. But Edgar How come the aliens never have clothes on in these pictures either? Like they'd be wearing some kind of clothing. But we do not share his opinions on this issue. But Edgar continues to claim that aliens and alien craft are real and is positive that we are being watched right now. Another thing people more recently have pointed out is the International Space Station's Why do they look like humans? Because the universe was seeded by the same bipedal ancestor in 2014, that we all share. NASA allegedly cut the live feed coming from the Earth viewing cameras mounted on the space station just when a mysterious UFO appeared to hover over the Earth. UFO watchers claim that the drop-off in the live feeds as soon as a UFO comes into view is an obvious and deliberate attempt to hide what they believe are regular sightings the fuck is this picture from? This is amazing. ...of alien spacecrafts observing Earth. Some say this is the moon or a lens flare, and others believe it's an alien craft. Also, UFO watcher Toby Lund apparently spotted a UFO on the live stream outside the space station before the stream was interrupted for around 15 seconds. Needless to say, it's certainly strange that NASA cut the video when things like this happen. Maybe it's just a coincidence due to them experiencing technical difficulties, or maybe they know something that we don't. <laughs> like a 90s the music video. The size of our universe. Now, even those who do not believe in the UFO or alien photos and videos going around, there are many that say due to the oh, that's the, uh, of the universe, pillars of it's heaven, right? What's that one called? Another life that nebula. The pillars of heaven. Why people say alien life must be out there? You must first realize how big the universe is. Led Zeppelin. It's believed that the diameter Eternity. of the observable universe is around 28 billion parsecs, which Led is around used it for something, billion right? light years. Now, a single light year is just under six trillion miles, which is a ridiculous number. So, six trillion times 93 billion. And don't forget, that is just what we can observe. And it's not that we don't have the technology to observe any further. It's just that life from other objects hasn't had enough time to reach Earth since the beginning of the cosmological expansion. And with all that, astronomers at the University of Auckland have said that it's believed there are around 50 sextillion planets in the observable universe. 
Now I will leave you to decide whether you think that only one out of those 50 sextillion planets can harbour any form of life. Whoa. Some believe that civilizations are currently existing on Earth-like planets right alongside us, and others believe we could even be the bacteria of an another eye, life. though. Add all of that with the possibility of infinite or multi-dimension. The universe is an eye. The level. Whether you believe in any of those theories or not, there is absolutely no denying that the universe is incredible. The universe and is, with is like a really long questions. tube. The men in black. Now, although this sort of ties in with the thought that NASA are covering things up, the men in black deserve a talk on their own. The men in black are thought to be government agents who harass or threaten UFO and alien witnesses to keep them quiet about what they have seen. Over the years, there have been many myths flying around about them, and whether not, they exist or not, not a truck that you just dump but stuff. If they on. do, then many say it proves that there is something out there that the government do not want us to know about. Now, whether their existence can be confirmed, there are tons of reports of people believing they have had encounters with them. You ever think that's like kind of weird that Will Smith was in Men in Black and Mission, uh, uh, Mission Impossible, Independence Day? Like that's kind of weird, right? One told they're like trying to tell us something. A respected family physician from Old Orchard Beach, Maine. They're trying to like have a laugh at us. A UFO case in September 1976. When the phone rang and a man identified himself as a representative of a New Jersey UFO. They're just like rubbing the evidence in our nose. The man asked him if he could come to the doctor's house to talk to him about the oh, this, what, Is this from a game? What the fuck is this from? He said that he could come around and after the call ended, Herbert got up from his chair to turn on the lights and the man was already in his house walking up the stairs. Hopkins was so shocked at how he was in the house without knocking in such a short amount of time and was even more shocked at the man's strange appearance. He said in an interview yeah, that's not really doing much for them. black suit, black shoes, black socks, a white shirt with black tie and a black hat. He also told reporters that the man was <laughs> just a bold as neck and had no eyebrows or eyelashes. Aliens are or boring. Man was wearing I don't think aliens are boring. When he wiped his mouth with the back of his glove, his lips were smeared and there was red lipstick on his glove. His voice was apparently passive, as if it was a machine, and they began talking about the UFO case when this strange man ordered Herbert to destroy all the evidence he had gathered about the case. He apparently got to his what feet is this and said very slowly, My energy is, <laughs> what is low. This? must go now, goodbye, before steadily walking down the stairs and disappearing. Dr. Hopkins was left terrified and has no idea what happened that night. Another very unique case started uh, on the 14th of October 2009. When two witnesses believed they saw a triangular unknown aerial object outside of a hotel and a UFO case file was opened. Then, several weeks later, two unidentified men in black visited the same hotel looking for the two it's witnesses them. who saw this UFO. The two witnesses were not there at the time, so the men in black harassed the hotel staff for approximately 30 minutes before leaving. Those who spoke to the men said they were completely bald with no eyebrows or eyelashes. They apparently had relatively big, strange eyes and did not blink once whilst talking. <laughs> now, there is no real proof whether or not the video footage and reports are a hoax, or whether it really did happen. Why do they walk the backwards, though? Right there, trying to keep us from knowing too much. Top five. Really makes you think. You know? Really makes you think. Okay, here we go. This is a good one. These have all been disproven, but it's still fun. The ocean. It's a huge and mostly unexplored place on our planet, and an incredible 95% of all the oceans in the world still remains unseen by humans. This leaves the burning question of what could be lurking in the unexplored areas. Many experts believe that given the vast the is of good. the ocean, it would not be a surprise if some pretty large animals still remain undiscovered. And there's certainly no denying that when talking about the unexplored deep sea, the first thing people tend to think of is the possibility of mythical and terrifying sea creatures. And although this thought is amazing, it's equally Like that terrifying. guy with the axe. Now, over the years, there have been many mysterious sounds captured by underwater devices that to this day have no real explanation. So have a listen to no, these and they see do. what you think. I recommend you wear some headphones to better hear the sounds, and let's get started with five of the most mysterious underwater sounds ever recorded. Imagine how much food you could eat if let's you could open your mouth up like that. the most popular underwater sound ever recorded. The I love that picture. Most of you have already probably heard it, 
but maybe you haven't heard the actual real-time recorded version. It was first heard in 1997 when it was picked up on hydrophones across the Pacific, and whatever it was, it was very, very loud. The underwater microphones that picked it up were around 3,000 miles away and still managed to detect it. Most versions on the internet have been speeded up by 16 times so that the bloop can be heard easier. As the, the bloop. original version I find far more eerie and mysterious. Let's take a listen. So it's sped up 16 times. It doesn't sound like anything. Yeah, wasn't it just supposed to be like ice moving? Like icebergs moving and glaciers and stuff like that. Something like that. Shortly after this recording, the sound was pinpointed by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. It was located around 650 miles off the South American coast <laughs> in a remote corner of the Pacific Ocean. Fans of fictional tales went wild because it's around here that the legendary Cthulhu creature written by H.P. Lovecraft in 1928 was alleged to have lived. Now, although the NOAA now believe the sound was caused by an ice quake, there is actually no real there evidence to prove that this was the cause. So, what do you think it was <laughs> caused by? Some say it was a blue whale, but there are no recorded blue whales in history whose sound could be heard from 3,000 miles away. Others strongly believe it was some sort of whale hybrid or other enormous unknown sea creature. That would since suck. the sound still has no precise origin. Why would that thing bother eating you, though, if you were that small? Mystery. Upsweep. Labeled the upsweep due to its narrow band upsweeping sound, this mysterious sound was first heard when the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory began its underwater audio surveillance in August 1991. What's unusual about this reoccurring sound is that it's very seasonal. In the spring and autumn, the sound will get louder, then during the rest of the year, it will be quieter. What is also strange is that since his first discovery, the noise level has slowly been decreasing year That'd after suck. year, but even now, it can still be faintly heard echoing through the sea. The real-time version is very long, so here it is speeded up 16 times. Take a listen. It's coming out of his mouth. Sounds like the beginning of Earthbound. Since the sound was located near believed submarine volcanoes, it's thought to possibly be bubbles from a volcano which are getting trapped in a cave or overhang hmm. above which is causing this strange sound. But since it's thought to be coming from the dark That's like some Godzilla shit ocean, though. Which so far cannot be explored, what's causing this frequent seasonal sound is a mystery. The train. This next unidentified sound was recorded on March the 5th, 1997 by the Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array in the same year as the bloop and the slow down recording. The bloop. It was labeled the train because it sounds similar to the wheels of a train rubbing against the tracks. There is so little information on this mysterious sound, but we do know that there are a few theories on what it could be. Take a listen. I like that the anglerfish was shooting lightning out of his light in that one. the train scientists think that it's most likely an iceberg dragging they're all the icebergs floor, creating I think. shock waves and producing the sound but many are certain that this is not the case and that it's caused by some giant sea creature that lives between the icebergs deep in the ocean since the deepest depths of the ocean are yet to be exposed and with the discovery of new sea creatures every year we certainly cannot rule this out 
But what do you think? Is it an iceberg scraping the ocean floor or a creature that we can't even begin to imagine? Since March 1999, an annual underwater sound has been recorded by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. It could be the Emerald just Weapon. Just off the coast of good. South America. Named Julia, this creepy sound has an enormous amount of speculation surrounding it. Many believe Julia is the sound of a huge underwater sea A lot of pictures of this mainly guy. due to the fact that it sounds like something howling deep in the ocean. What do you think? Why, why is it called Julia? That sounds more like a real thing. That sounds more like a living creature. Than the other ones too. Excuse me. It's long. Some say the thought of a giant underwater sea creature is unrealistic, and the sound is a result oh, of underwater face? volcanic activity or a large iceberg knocking the ocean floor. The little face. But with the sound being caught so clearly and real. Oh, look at this guy. Year, one's imagination can run wild. It's just a T-Rex head a on a plesiosaurus. There are believed to be secret photographs taken by NASA's Apollo that AA-35 that are thought to show a huge shadow moving through the waters in the southwest region of Cape Cada which is the same sort of area as Julia can be heard. The shadow was allegedly larger than the Empire State Building, but was dismissed as being any known sea creature simply because there is no animal that matches the incredible size of the image captured. It could have been a colony of swimming fish, but there is no evidence of this, so people have come up with all kinds of theories, from giant undiscovered whales to enormous octopuses. But since we can't right, prove exactly awesome. what Julia I was love... caused by, like, uh, there be dragons here, kind of like illustrations. Look at that guy. This thing is sick. People used to have, like, such a good imagination for this kind of thing. I like the art style of that, too. The sound and the believed photos that could be the cause of the sound. Look at that guy. And continue to remain a mystery. He doesn't even look like he's bad. Slow down. All of these underwater sounds are eerie, but this next one takes an things to another level. It was recorded on May the 19th, 1995 by underwater recorders in the equatorial Pacific Ocean just off the Antarctic Peninsula. It has been heard on more than one occasion, and this eerie descending frequency was detected by three sensors nearly 3,100 miles away. The sound is like something from a horror movie as it descends in frequency over several minutes. Oh, that's awesome. When it was released to the public, it had I love that picture. up 16 times to better hear the frequency change. Take a listen. There's always a bigger fish. Any giant sea creature is a million times scarier than Bigfoot, definitely. Because they definitely are more plausible. It doesn't even have to be like one of these. I mean, even a whale is kind of scary. If you were like swimming in the ocean, then you look down and there's like a fucking whale underneath you. Some say the it would just, sound spectrum of like the, the feeling of that is scary. That of ice friction vibrations. It's believed that this creepy sound is caused by ice sheets breaking off a few thousand miles away and plunging down to the bottom of the ocean. That's even kind of scary, dude. As they fall and drag on the side of a surface. But since this cannot be proven, imagine getting stuck under that slow down mysterious sound filed as one of their unexplained sounds of the sea. So that's five very real and very mysterious sounds that have been captured underwater. What do you think they are? Very real. All right. Those were some good videos. <clears throat> now I'm going to play a video game for an hour, but it's a sponsored bounty video game. So 